right, it's nice to have you back here in this new video. I'm now recording with Cool Cam 3 Ultra, the rear lens at 4K 30 FPS with dynamic range boost. Because I am shooting now with a backlit scenario, but on the back side is very bright. And uh, I do have a plan light on my face. So I literally opened up the Rec 2020 HLG 10-bit with dynamic range boost. I'm also recording the audio via the wireless microphone where I'm holding, wearing on my shirts. So the Type-C port is actually doubled as the wireless audio input jack. You know what? What drives me crazy about the Cookham 3 Ultra is the HDR capability. It is the very first consumer level 360 camera that could capture true HDR content and a real HDR workflow, a pipeline, can be applied from start to finish on the basis of Cookham 3 Ultra. The topic about this video is actually on the HDR pipeline or how to use the HDR workflow for fast, simple, and yet effective uh, user-friendly HDR workflow in this video. So we're going to cover a lot in this video from the basic settings, how to capture the video, how to capture content, how to import your project, how to export, how to further optimize your uh, project settings, and how to take the fully advantage of the hardware acceleration on your uh, PC or Mac. But more importantly, you know, I'd like to share with you my personal understand on the true HDR workflow pipeline in the year 2024, because I am actually a newbie on HDR content creation. And, uh, if I can understand and show you the HDR power, HDR workflow, so you can understand, you can acquire the same level of HDR skill like me by the end of this video. Only if you have an HDR display that you can finally jump into the HDR pipeline and view and edit on the go. So for me, I have my MacBook Pro. I'm holding my hand like this. This is my MacBook Pro. Uh, with the M2 Max Apple Silicon and built with the Apple XDR display that reaches a maximum brightness of 1600 nits. So this is a true HDR display that this MacBook Pro is perhaps the best low budget entrance point for entering the HDR pipeline from start to finish. Just reconsider your working environment, whether you have a display support HDR or not, that uh, if you still stick together with an uh, uh, SDR display, just, just get rid of the HDR pipeline and shoot in Rec 709 and uh, use your original workflow and that, that's, that's good enough. Well, I assume that you already have an HDR display, so first we need to make some customization of settings on the Cookham 3 Ultra to capture the HDR format. First, just turn on the 10-bit color size with Rec 2020 color space. Just in the settings and tab, and you are good to go. Well, when capturing 10-bit, uh, the Cookham 3 Ultra is actually captured with 10-bit 420 in Rec 2020. The color space Rec 2020 is a great starting point for HDR content creation in post-production. Another exciting feature hidden inside the Cookham 3 Ultra is the dynamic range boost. Considering the Cookham 3 Ultra is built with a quad bear sensor with a 1 over 1.7 inch, where you get plenty of pixels to play around, where you got plenty of light, just like the, the previous scenario I'm capturing the backlit, in backlit situation, I still have plenty of light, but this is where I can turn on the dynamic range boost. Later, the image signal processing unit gonna sample this content with 14-bit depths, then confirm tone map compressed into a 10-bit HEVC codec and save into your memory card. So this is perhaps the extent the dynamic range of the four stops, and uh, by capturing dynamic range boost 10-bit 420 in Rec 2020. Uh, with plenty of light, I mean with plenty of light. This is the best possible quality being captured with Cook MAK. There are two options. Number one, just turn on 10-bit 420 Rec 2020 and start recording. 
Number two, that we have plenty of light, turn on dynamic range boost, 10 bit photo zero, rec 2020, capture with four stops, more dynamic range, and it is the best possible result you're gonna get from this camera when you have plenty of light. Once you have finished your shooting, you are ready to go into your post-production workflow. So next up, it's time to show you my screen share for you that to show you what I am working on the basis of Adobe Premiere and Media Encoder 2024 that exceeds the boundaries of HDR content and uh, some fast, simple, and yet very user-friendly options that you can tweak inside during the whole pipeline. Now, let's go to my screen share. I mean, it's time to just import to the latest CoolCam Studio and uh, give you the shot. It's a previous video being captured with CoolCam 3 Ultra. Uh, and uh, remember to update to the latest 2.7.0.17 in uh, September 1st, 2024. I just received this update. And here you get this, uh, you can manipulate footage of a single lens option inside the studio software. I mean, the studio need to be further optimized for better experience uh, on the, you know, on the, the single lens because you have uh, very limited options. Well, at this time, to capture a great single lens footage, you're gonna guarantee that the this, this people sit exactly in the middle, or you, you, you're gonna lose the target. Take a look. I'm now sitting in the middle of the frame, so I can select the free, free view, and uh, I am in the middle of the frame. If I sit offset the middle uh, the, the center when tap the free view uh you know i am offset into the other so now this, this is an export a, a frame reframe uh rectilinear shot or cylindrical shot rectilinear 130 field of view and you are and it that's it this is my production i'm uh, gonna reframe 130 field of view and you are good to go. I mean, it's a great option overall. And uh, okay, before we really get started, just I mean, the, the audio quality looks pretty awesome, and uh, before we the, the video also looks pretty stunning. And hit on stabilization, hit on free view, and uh, yes, you're gonna center the horizon line. But considering that I have been shooting this single lens on a tripod. Here is a tweak for you guys. You can skip the part of the studio and jump directly in the Premiere, use a, a lens distortion to remove the fisheye and uh, bring back the rectilinear shot. But when you are walking around with single lens, you need to stabilize the footage in the studio. Then in export in ProRes, I mean ProRes, and then you know uh, go back to a Premiere. And uh, import, I mean, I'm gonna import this section. Let me go to the editing panel. Uh, import this uh, cool cam footage. Just directly drag and drop in the middle of the frame. And uh, take a look. Before I start capturing. This is a, a circular fisheye image. I'm in the effects search for lens distortion. But in the lens distortion, just apply this settings and you can remove this you can remove the fisheye effects uh, immediately just remember uh, here you can use the the curvature the minus 55 tap I mean a uh, minus uh, 15 50 minus uh, 15 2 you see that the lines go straight and everything been bring back to normal and the, the fisheye image has been warped into the square. Next up, it's time to, yes, you just zoom in a little bit and you are good to go. This is how it works. This is how it works. I mean, you can bring back the detail and the highlights. And uh, this is how it works. Well, if you still want to bring more detail, you can lower down the shots. For me, I think this is a great overall. 
I mean, this is great. Looks pretty identical like that of the, the QCAM Studio result. Okay, so before we insert in all the content into timeline, that first we need to interpret the footage. So modify the color, interpret footage. I mean, when the, the footage being captured is QCAM 3 Ultra. They always use the REC 2100 HLG log gamma curve uh, in the color profile. But if not, just override with the media color space, such as REC 2100 HLG, and uh, click on OK. Later, just guarantee that this is a QCAM 3 Ultra HDR10 workflow. It is actually the, the project you are watching at this moment. I mean, sequence settings, you're going to make sure that you have this working color space as REC 2100 HLG and turn off auto tone map media because I want control with precise settings in post production and a lumetri color grading. Okay, this is how it works. And so you can guarantee that you are now watching in the truly uh, HDR brightness, color space, and post production. And later you can make a rough edit and uh, you are yeah, good to go. Well, after the latest firmware on the QM3 Ultra with an onboard microphone that has a, a higher gain in internal gain. So this audio I'm going to use directly from the, this camera. So I'm going to delete this track and use, use the sound track from this camera. I mean, this it should be a great audio level compared to the previous formula. I'm going to use this. So it looks like it's a, almost a, a stereo audio track. And uh, in my effects, in my preset menu, I will also make some uh, presets for the footage being captured with Google 3 Ultra, I can share with you my effects. Here in the presets, the starting presets, I do have a REC 2100 Lumetri. Drag and drop. Oops. Uh, go to the color settings. The turn off a lot. And you can manipulate just uh, lower the exposure the saturations and lower down the contrast. Just take a look at the Lumetri scope. Turn on HDR. The maximum brightness for HDR10 is 1000 nits. So you can see that some bright areas reaches the 1000 nits. Uh, lower down the highlights, bring back a little bit and uh, turn on the black for a little bit. And for a creative, add a little bit more sharpness because the footage being captured with Google 3 Ultra is less sharpened. Well, this is a basic settings. Well, just take a look at the overall contrast, colors. You can never go back once you see the real power for the HDR10 media. This is how it works. And after a rough edit, just hit on export, export its media. Here are some basic settings on exporting the same image. I have already made my personal uh, presets. Here I will show you uh, my specific settings. Here I use a 4K uh, 30 FPS drop frame. And uh, I use hardware encoding. And the profile is set to main 10. Main 10 indicates that it's a, a truly HDR10 format. And the tire choose main. And uh, the exporting color space is selected ready REC 2100 HLG. It's exactly like the timeline color space I've been working on my project. And just turn off the include HDR10 metadata because once I have turned on, I only have software encoding. I mean, software encoding on my uh, Apple Silicon M2 Max is pretty slow. With hardware encoding, uh, Exporting one minute 4K 60 footage take around one and a half minutes. It's a pretty fast time consuming and save you time and efforts. So this is a basic settings. 
And uh, yes, you can further customize this luminance encoding the VBRI set to 30 megabits per second. And yes, audio use the, the 5.1 channel, uh, 14, 8 kilohertz, the AAC audio codec, and 640 kbps, the audio track. That's a better quality than that of uh, original uh, 320 uh, kbps in H.265. Uh, this is how it works. I have saved this preset into my personal HLG. 2100 HDR10 hardware 30 megabit per second. And next time I can directly send to the media encoder and uh, start exporting, then upload to YouTube, share with you guys. So this is a brief recap of my desktop, my MacBook Pro, Premiere 2024, and media encoder 2024. That, that's it. Hey, time, I think it's time to give you a brief wrap up on this video. I mean, this video has been captured entirely with the Cooking 3 Ultra, single lens 4K30 with dynamic range boost. Just take a look at how bright and the backlit scenario. Uh, just give you a brief recap on this video. First, to enjoy the full HDR pipeline in your workflow, you're going to guarantee that you have an HDR display for you to view and play back and edit uh, on your timeline. Next, I have shared with you some basic settings before capture the true HDR content. Just remember, just bear in mind, the 10-bit color, rec 2020 color space, and uh, use, always use high bit rate to retain the best possible information. And more importantly, you know, in the high contrast ratio, just turn it on and with plenty of light, you turn on the dynamic range boost for the, the best the premium video option. Well, when you jump into the workflow, into the studio or the Adobe Premiere, just remember to interpret your footage, to set the specific setting to a timeline, and export it without HDR metadata, and use the, take the full advantage of the HDR of the hardware acceleration in your platform to save your time and efforts. And uh, with bear always in mind, you can you can export your own HDR footage export, upload to YouTube, share with your content because YouTube is an HDR compatible content platform to share on a social media platform. I do hope you can learn something from this video and uh, master your HDR workflow with your Google Story Ultra or no matter some other cameras as well, such as the DJI Pocket 3 or the GoPro or some any other cameras could capture in 10-bit color or in the flat log profile, then you can apply my technique, my workflow to any other cameras as well. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to sum up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. So what do you know more about Quick3 Ultra? You can leave down in the comments and let me know. I can share with you my personal tutorial and understand on a specific point, but you might have concerns in your perspective. We'll talk to you soon, see you next time. Bye.